Welcome back to Primetime Lawmakers. Near the beginning of the session, we devoted an onset discussion to the water wars and all that process on the front is comparable to a dripping faucet. There are several measures before the General Assembly this year dealing with water supply. We thought this was a great time to check in again. And there are two bills for the House and Senate calling for the establishment of study committees to look into withdrawing water from the Tennessee River Basin. Bill supporters say runoff water from Georgia contributes several million gallons a day to the Tennessee River Basin. And Senator Ross Tollison is sponsoring a measure, SB 122, to allow local governments to enter into public-private partnerships for water system planning and construction. I'm joined now on set by Senator Tollison of Perry. Senator Tollison is the chairman of the Senate Natural Resources and Environment Committee. And Sally Bethay is with us, founding director of the Upper Chattahoochee Riverkeeper, an environmental advocacy group. It's great to have you with us this evening. And uh, Thank of course, you. there's Thank you. no more universal issue than water. Bill supporters say runoff water from Georgia contributes several million gallons a day to the Tennessee River Basin. And since we're talking about some pending legislation, Senator, we'll start with you. Uh, is there any chance Georgia will get access to the Tennessee River Basin? Well, the way I look at the Tennessee River Basin is that if we really uh, we need to do our homework here in the state. Uh, some of the bills that we passed last year, the Senate Bill 370, the Conservation Act, um, move forward with that, move forward with the public partnership bill that I have uh, moving through uh, the House. Uh, hopefully it'll be on the House for Wednesday. Um, and, and do our work here. Uh, if the Tennessee River is a, a potential that's something we're going to work with the federal government on uh, and so i kind of believe more than dropping resolutions uh, out there uh, do your homework uh, and if there's potential or use of some of that water then you know we'll work with our um, neighboring states and also the federal government on that of course tennessee river doesn't flow in georgia uh, would it be a good thing to get some water from there Ms. Bethay? Absolutely not. We have so many other ways we can get water that we need through efficiency, through use of existing reservoirs. And I just don't think legally or uh, environmentally or uh, financially we're going to be able to get water from Tennessee. It's a pretty crazy idea. All right. So don't see it going anywhere. All right. I don't look at it as crazy. I look at it as we have to do our homework if, if we're potentially able to tap that resource. Let, let's talk about uh, reservoirs and public-private partnerships. Would it be necessary to have them in order to build something as expensive as new reservoirs? The public-private partnership bill, Senate Bill 122, uh, does not deal with reservoirs or a part of that bill. Okay. Uh, it deals with all water infrastructure. And if you look at Senate Bill uh, 370, we passed a conservation bill last year just take one little item out of that bill, um, the uh, uh, leak detection of all water systems in the state of Georgia over the next few years are going to have to have leak detection, detection monitoring done on them. There may be a lot of infrastructure that has to be rebuilt across this state in different uh, water systems. All those communities may, may, be, may not be able to get, just go out and float more bonds or whatever to, to uh, uh, redo that infrastructure so they may bring on public-private partnerships. Uh, right. Reservoirs are another th item that mm. could be used as a public-private partnership. But the thing about that bill is just giving the tool to local governments to use that fi uh, finance uh, source if they need to. Uh, of course, people don't want to sell their land for a project like this under eminent domain. The government can come take it from them. Is that a proper use of that land for a public-private public partnership? Uh, how does the Upper Chattahoochee River keep Well, like with that? all due respect to the Senator, we're really concerned about this bill. We think that it's a land grab for developers in North Georgia um, under the aegis of creating water supply projects. In fact, if there are no state funds, a uh, local project can uh, uh, create a reservoir with local funds and a subdivision developer can put up houses around the lake with no restrictions on septic systems or anything else to protect the lake. And those restrictions currently are in place for state-funded reservoirs. So the developer would get uh, an advantage that we think isn't fair. And also under eminent domain, a local government could uh, take a private landowner's property and then convey it to any private developer as long as they apply for and call themselves a public utility. And that utility has no restrictions on the rates that they can charge people. So we are really concerned about the lack of safeguards for the public interest with this bill. And I uh, think it very much needs to have some revisions. Is there a way to put a circuit breaker in that to forestall that? Uh, there that are problem? circuit breakers in the bill. The bill doesn't do that. Uh, the bill does not give, uh, number one, the bill uh, is dealing with, mostly with uh, using uh, these um, 
any government that, that the, if the state's involved in the project, uh, number one, that mm -hmm. locks the project down itself. Um, eminent domain laws are not changed at all with this bill. It does not change at all. It's current law, uh, eminent domain, so that has no bearing on that bill at all. Um, so at the end of the day, this bill is only a tool to help local governments if they so desire to use it as a tool. Um, your local governments are in control of the whole process. They're in control of however they draw up a contract. It's, it's the local mm -hmm. government drawing that up. It's not. Uh, Let's get a quick comment from uh, Sally Bethea on that and then we'll move on to their subject. Sure. Well, what we already know is that there are developers right now up in Dawson and Lumpkin County who are saying to private landowners, if you won't let us, you know, if you won't sell your property to us for this reservoir on Calhoun Creek, well, then we're going to get the local government to use eminent domain, and we'll get it uh, anyway. I mean, this well, is happening right now. That's already the, the law. I mean, you can't. Yeah. You know, that, this bill doesn't it. have. This bill okay. does not. Let's move on to the, to the, nego not, that's the negotiations uh, to, to, to solve the water problem between uh, uh, Georgia, Alabama, and Florida. You pointed out something really interesting the last time you were here. Inside that federal court decision was the mandate to keep those discussions private especially between the governors. Mm. Can you tell us anything at all about whether or not any substantive uh, conversations no, are taking on, place? I'm not on the negotiating team, so <laughs> actually I can't. Uh, and and they, they, I'm not privy to that information because it is that way, and the reason it's that way is to let the three teams mm -hmm. try to negotiate uh, a, a deal without having all the noise around them. Uh, and at the end of the day, anything that they that they negotiate out will then come to the uh, public forefront by having to come to each legislature. So In the 30 seconds we have left, are you happy with the atmosphere around this process now? With the tri-state negotiations? Yes. Mm -hmm. we, we want a more open, transparent process. We think that that will result in an agreement that everybody can buy into. Secrecy never ends up uh, resulting in a good outcome. All right, thanks very much for your input as always and for your service. I sure appreciate you Thank being you here. Thank you very much. It's always great to come with today you. on this important issue. Coming up tomorrow on Primetime Lawmakers, the House is scheduled to consider legislation establishing an advisory commission on mandated health insurance benefits. The commission would study the social and economic impact of the federal health care law. We'll continue our leadership interview series with Senate Appropriations Chairman Jack Hill, plus in-depth analysis on important legislative issues and the latest Capitol News tomorrow night at 7. See a repeat of this broadcast tomorrow morning at 530 right here on GPB. Coming up next, join David, Kat, and Ricky as they visit the Atlanta Dogwood Festival in Piedmont Park, the Masters Tournament in Augusta, Harness Horse Racing in Hawkinsville, and Ghost Hunting in Savannah. Have a great night. This is a GPB original production.